Hi, my name is Craig Saxton. I'm an RV14 builder and owner, and I'm here to tell you why I'm so excited about this Delta Hawk engine. It's it's amazing. Little history, been a pilot since 1990. Um, been in the experimental community almost from that time, uh, early 90s, I think I became an EAA member. Uh, started building my first experimental back then an avid mark IV. uh have built uh, three already we're in the process of number four and number five which coincidentally three four and five are all 14s um, the rb14 is an amazing plane and i think this delta hawk engine is a perfect pairing to go with the rb14 airframe and i'll explain why i'll give you a few examples um look rb14s are there's all kinds of RV14 owners and builders and we have slightly different missions and stuff. Um, but there's a lot of us who I think I probably, I'm probably representative of quite a few RV owners and builders in terms of how I use the plane. I have a ranch up in the Cascades at a few thousand feet. And I fly off a grass strip there. But in addition to that, um, I use my plane you know to travel for pleasure and business it's been all across the country it's been all the way out to maine and back here i think we've hit 40 states so far in it uh, i do a lot of traveling frequently between seattle and the san francisco bay area uh, anyone familiar with that knows you go over a lot of mountains in that area in fact if you uh, have to file for ifr um, some of the minimum in route legs are 11, 12,000 feet, and depending on whether you might want to go higher. Um, so I've got a real range of altitudes that I like to fly the plane, and I can. And I, and I go everywhere from short trips, um, you know, the 100 or it's probably $200 hamburger now, I guess, is uh, the cliche, to, um, you know, the Seattle, San Francisco leg. I forget how many miles that is, but it's about a three and a half hour trip in the RV. And um, over the course of, I think I have 600 hours just on this one, and I had an RV7 I put 1,000 hours on before this, um, I developed a little bit of a wish list. As much as I love the RV14, and it is an amazing plane. It's an amazing plane with the Lycoming IO390 Thunderbolt that I have in it right now. And for comparison's sake, just so you know, when I talk about numbers, the current RV I have right now is a uh, 14 finished it in 2020 it has a uh, Lycoming IO 390 you know it's fuel injected it's got P mags on it and we bump the compression one half uh, which is a, an option through Lycoming I believe it puts out 200 about 220 horsepower my top speed in that plane I believe it's probably the fastest 14 out there because we did a modified Sam James cowl on the front we gained seven miles an hour. The top speed is 221 miles an hour and uh, 190, 191 knots. Uh, that's down closer to sea level. The plane loses speed with altitude as they all do because it's not turbocharged or supercharged. And it's one of my peeves. I regularly fly um, in the teens, especially if I'm heading towards the east and I'll see the uh, percent power of the engine drop down in the 60s and I'll see my top speed go down because I'm usually flying wide open throttle, uh, either peak or just slightly lean a peak. And I'll see my top speed go from 191 knots down to 167 knots, say 14,000 feet or so. Um, I don't want to say that's frustrating, but it's like, dang, the VNE of that plane is 200 knots. I'd much rather be scooting along up there at the VNE if the conditions are fine. The other area where I've seen the performance compromised a bit is at high density altitude. Um, so not just at altitude, but um, I've taken off from Las Vegas when it was 113 degrees on the tarmac. Noticeable change in climbing performance. I had a wish. I, I was already knew I was going to build another RV-14. I was so happy with how the first one came out. I had already thought of a few tweaks. And a little backstory on that, I built it with Synergy Air in Oregon the world's largest builder assist program for builders of RV aircraft. Uh, Synergy almost exclusively does builder assist for RVs. They've done over 200. Let me tell you though, why I'm so excited about this engine. It goes beyond the fact that 
I, you know, anybody who's Googled Delta Hawk probably realizes they've been around for more than a decade now. Uh, they've pumped a hundred million dollars into this project, have brought in some amazing people to do amazing things. I think currently they, they employ a staff of 60 and my experience with them personally so far has been first rate. And by the way, I've been in business doing multiple things from real estate to restaurants, to some aviation related stuff. At one point I had a company where we had 1500 employees. I can recognize a well-run organization and this is one. They've been a real pleasure to work with. It's not a fly-by-night organization. It's not a bunch of nice, talented guys working out of a garage. These guys have a legitimate operation um, and they execute very well. I, I am thoroughly impressed with them. Um, why am I excited about this engine? Well, going back to what I was describing in my uh, experience with the RD so far, on my wish list, we'll just start there. Number one is improved performance. It deals with altitude operations or high, you know, high, high temperature operations, you know, density altitude in a nutshell. Um, this engine has a native supercharger and turbocharger. It's all part of the design from the beginning. It's not a Frankenstein setup where somebody tried to put this on and really doesn't have the insight into the engine architecture and necessarily how these two things you know, meet. And there can always be difficulty in mating up disparate things like that. Uh, this was conceived from the ground up this way. So there's really no degradation in power up until you're in the teens. That in and of itself is huge. And that means on these longer legs, like Seattle to San Francisco, um, I'm gonna save a fair amount of time because if I want, I can keep that throttle open and I'm gonna see some pretty amazing true air speeds up there. Um, it also means when I'm taking off from my ranch in the summer, I have a grass strip on my ranch, I'm up at altitude there and I'm surrounded by timber country. Uh, in the summer uh, in Oregon, it can be pretty warm. Uh, to know that I have full power at that density altitude that I'm experiencing is great. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm, it's going to mean the difference between hitting the trees and not hitting the trees, but it's going to give me a comfortable safety margin that is less comfortable with my current setup, where on a 90 degree day taking off from you know, close to 3,000 feet, I just don't have uh, the cushion that I would have had normally. That alone would have me ecstatic about this engine. But as you peel the onion, onion there's, it's the gift that keeps giving. Um, next is it's about 35% more fuel efficient than a Lycoming. That's huge. And you know, right now when I travel, I can't recall the last time I paid less than $5 a gallon for low lead. And typically in some of the places I go, it's $7 and God forbid every once in a while, $8, I have to choke up for it. To be able to save 35% or have 35% better fuel efficiency alone is huge. But on top of that, this is a diesel engine that burns Jet A. My experience uh, along the West Coast here has typically been when, you know, as I've looked in the past, that it's Jet A has been about 50 cents to a, up to a dollar cheaper than the low lead. Uh, that is monumental. I feel like I have the ability to get an engine that's a modern design, that's a better performer, and yet will cost significantly less to operate. It's almost too good to be true. Um, there's a couple other things that I think are worth noting. Um, the architecture of the engine is simple. Uh, and I think they say, you know, simple is hard to execute, and I agree with that. But the end result, it's simple. There are no plugs, no plugs to change. Uh, there's no magneto on this. Um, they've put the package together in a way to where the few accessories that you do bolt on are easily accessible and can be worked on if they need to be. Uh, ultimately, too, and I, I kind of chuckle when I say this, but it's funny. I. I've come to realize this is probably one of those things that I didn't appreciate ahead of time, but I know I'm going to love this as soon as I'm flying the plane. There's no mixture knob. There are flights that I take in my current plane where I feel like I spend half the flight 
fiddling with the mixture control, you know, to try and get it just lean the peak slightly to get that little extra bit of fuel efficiency without compromising the performance, that all disappears. There's basically a gas pedal and a prop control. I am, um, I'm ecstatic about that. I'll spend more time looking out uh, the canopy of the 14, which has an amazing view anyway. Um, so those are the reasons I'm ex excited about the Delta Hawk. I believe it is the first legitimate alternative to a Lycoming in the 30 years that I've been involved with the uh, aviation community, experimental especially. Um, it offers amazing performance, economy, and simplicity of operation is probably the best way to put it. They've had this engine flying now already, it's certified. They've had it flying in a Cessna. I encourage you to Google the articles on that. We hope to have this up and flying, like I said, in a few months and we will have comparative performance data where I can show you what we're getting out of the new RV-14 we're building versus what I got out of my RV-14, which frankly is a pretty good RV-14 as it is. Um, I think it's gonna be profound and I think a lot of RV, RV pilots and builders are going to be seriously considering this engine and wondering how they can put one in their plane. And, and I have to tell you right now, I'm probably going to be their biggest supporter um, so far every step along the way. Um, Delta Hawk has um, lived up to what it said it could and would do and I think we're going to see more of that and I hope to see I hope to see people at Oshkosh with a plane, an RV-14 that's been flying and then they'll be just as excited as I am.